Welcome to another episode of Where the Stones Have a Story to Tell. We are hot off several episodes where we did a book review and got a lot of feedback from our viewers and subscribers. So we're going to do some spin-off episodes dealing with and addressing those comments. To start with, Kathleen SEB8950 stated it was hard to tell whether or not a stone wall was Native American built or colonist settler built. So, Tully and I thought it would be good to put together a video on the top five ways you can tell you're dealing with a Native American stone row instead of a settler farmer stone wall. Let's start with number five. The first way you'll be able to tell a Native American stone row from a settler wall is that somebody took the time to carry the stone row or wall all the way over embedded boulders. Ask yourself, if you're marking land or clearing it, are you going to waste your time hiking stones up on top of boulders? Probably not. That's the number five top way to figure out if you're dealing with a Native American stone row. The structure we'll see here is built off of a stone row. It is an enclosure. Enclosures were used by shaman during ceremonies during, at certain points of the year. They can be completely closed in, or they can be more U-shaped. For episodes specifically on different types of enclosures and their usage, please see the playlist in the descriptions. But this is definitely a way to know that this is the Native American stone row. Another way to tell that you've got a Native American stone row versus a settler wall is if there is stone like this built in. This could be a large Manitou stone. Manitou stones had the characteristics of shoulders and more of a neck without a head. That is a dead ringer for a Manitou stone. If you've got built in to a long stone row, I'm guessing you're going to find other things along the way. But for now, one of the top five ways to tell you've got a Native American stone row instead of a stone wall is that stone right there. The number two way to figure out whether a stone wall is actually a Native American stone row is it has a niche inside. Niches served several purposes, but one of them was to leave offerings at important days of the year. They would have a top stone, as you can see here, perched up on the left and the right, and a little stone down below to leave the offering on. That stone is still there. That opens up to sunrise at the winter solstice, so you can see the line of the wall. So if you found a niche in a stone wall, you know it's native. And the number one way you can tell you're not seeing a settler stone wall is that it's actually something totally different. It's not a Native American stone row either. It's a serpent effigy found all over the United States and very prevalent in New England force. The Serpent Mound in Ohio, well known, well researched, well studied and documented, dates back to 300 BC. An excellent example of how serpent effigies are used around the United States. We'll do a fast walk here through one of our serpent effigies at Gilbert Hills State Forest. They very often face into or away from bodies of water. This one is just a row of stones. It does have an over the embedded boulder feature there, but leads up to something that looks like a head. If serpent effigies are of interest to you, I'll put a link in the description to a playlist where I've done a number of different episodes on them. So there you have it. Native American serpent effigy. So there you have it, the top five ways, the quickest five ways to tell you're probably dealing with a Native American stone row or Native American stone structure versus a settler colonist wall. Whether it's carrying over embedded boulders, whether it's enclosures, Manitou stones, niches, or it's not a stone row at all, it's actually a serpent effigy. Those are the top five ways you can tell you're dealing with something that is very ancient and has been in the New England woods for a long, long time. Thank you, as always, see you next time.